Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this yellow cruiser bike down at the beach by an apple tree. Uh, we're going to be working on 16 by 20 canvas. I primed uh, once with acrylic gesso. I've got my number 50 filbert brush to start. I'm going to be using some teal or turquoise and just kind of start squeezing out that paint directly onto the canvas. And I got a bright light green, yellow green. I've got phthalo blue. Um, feel free to change up the colors slightly if you want for this painting. And I'm just going to start blending the green down at the bottom. And then I'm going to work my way up to the teal. And then finally work my way up to the blue so that it kind of gradually gets darker at the top in the sky. And then I'll be coming in with a little bit of white for some soft looking clouds. So after washing my brush off, I just scooped up some titanium white and I'm going to create little scoops like this uh, just to make fluffy looking clouds and just feel really free with your brush and just add some clouds all over. Keep them sort of diagonal along with the theme of the sky and this painting in general. The overall perspective of this painting is the hillside coming down on a slant and the sky like that as well. But then just a, a little hint of that sea down at the bottom. Uh, on the left side just goes straight across so there's just a little section there and all I'm doing here is really really lightly blending and and going softly over that wet white paint and the clouds with my filbert brush then you can see here I quickly and I do this quickly I switch over quickly to my mop brush my dry mop brush and go over and blend some more while it's still wet just to give it more of a, a blurry look so it's quite blended out now and I'm going to come in with my number 50 filbert again uh, and pick up some of my neon orange and a little bit of white and start adding hints of that tinted white for some clouds in the sky as well and blend it out. So I just start right about that green and just work my way up. So I'm just going to add some hints of that neon orange and white as well, like I added in the sky down below for the beach, the shoreline, and I'll build that area up a little bit as we go along, but that's just the first stage and the first layer down there. And then I'm just going to go, after I do this, load my palette up and just quickly go over some of the colors that we're going to be using here pretty soon. Okay, so we've got the following colors we're going to be using. Titanium white, green gold, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, black, and sap green. I've got a little round brush here. I believe it's a number eight. I'm going to take yellow ochre, burnt sienna, a little bit of black, 
not completely blend them to one color on the palette. I'm just going to let them um, kind of just mix around naturally right onto the canvas. And we'll start with our tree trunk. And it's going to be the base of it will be on a slant that kind of goes along with the slant of the hill. And then I'm just going to pull, press, and wiggle, and then let off on my brush and let off on the pressure where the branches get out further and are a lot thinner and smaller for those little baby branches. So it's going to be thicker to start the branches from the tree trunk and then skinnier. So you can paint as many or add as many um, branches as you want. I'm just going to do a few here. I want my tree to be a little bit on the smaller side because I really like the feeling of the sky in this and I didn't want to overpower the whole painting with a huge tree. I wanted to kind of have everything flow together nicely but you guys can paint your tree as big as you want and change this painting up as much as you want. So I'm going to make sure that the tree trunk is dark on this right side so it'll be more in shadow. I'll add a little bit more of my burnt sienna and black. For the front of the tree, on the left side of the tree, it will be highlighted in yellow ochre and a little bit of white. Now you'll notice that the way I'm pulling my branches is out towards the water. I want to give it that feeling that it's been the wind has been blowing that way towards the water for a long time making those branches and the tree kind of start to form that way in that direction so it, you feel movement in this painting and I also want to mention at the base of the tree we're going to have a shadow from that tree um, the tree trunk and the tree itself so I'm just going to use a darker color right now it's just whatever was left over in my brush that was dry and you can just see sort of a line at the base of the left side of the tree and the right side of the tree. I'm going to be using some green later on. I think I'm going to be using a little bit of my sap green uh, and making that shadow a little bit more exaggerated. Okay, so now that I've added that shadow down below, I'm going to switch over and use my oval mop brush. It's dry. I'm going to take some black sap green. I'll use a little bit of my green gold as well later on, and I'm just going to start the beginning stages here for the foliage and the leaves on this apple tree. So I don't want, I want, just want to be mindful that I'm doing a little bit at a time here and starting this off carefully. I It's very, very easy to add too much too soon so I, I want to do this sparingly so that I again don't overpower the canvas and the painting with um, just one big tree so I'm just going to do this slowly and add a little bit at a time Now what I'm going to start to do is pull, tap, and flick a little bit to create some more of that whimsical movement with the tree. And I'm using a little bit of my green gold now. I'm not washing my brush out. I've always got a hint of the color I've used before in my brush when I add another one. So I'm just going to start to add lighter areas to the leaves. A little bit at a time first with the green gold and then I'm going to be coming in with a little bit of white yellow and green gold for sunlit uh, leaves that are going to be really bright and have a lot of highlights to them now 
And I just want to go right down to the bottom of the tree here and add some more um, dense foliage. It looks a little bit too see-through and I want it to be darker there and more in shadow and create just a bit more of a contrast. And then I'm going to tap with my brush to create that foliage texture and then pull and flick a little bit for uh, possibly little bits of grass or flower stems. And I'm going to add a little bit of foliage down here at the base of the hill. Um, this is uh, inspired by the beach close to our house where we live and there's a big apple tree down there and right now it's actually full of beautiful fragrant uh, apple blossoms. Uh, soon there will be apples and maybe I'll uh, take some pictures and share them with you guys. It's a really pretty spot and there's tall grass and and uh, little flowers down at the bottom of the hill by the sand there on the beach so I just want to add a little hint of that as well I'm gonna come in here now and I've, I was really careful in the beginning and now I can come in and, and see where I need to make some areas a little bit fuller on the tree so that's what I'm doing I'll just come in now with a little bit more of my sap green maybe a bit of black green gold and then I'll come in with some brighter highlights Now what I want to do is concentrate on adding, building up more of a shadow and base where our bike is going to be. Uh, the bike is bright, it's like a buttery yellow, and in order for that to show up, we need to have a darker base or underpainting here on the right side. So if we didn't do that, then the bike would just sort of be lost and be very flat looking against the light greeny yellow uh, hill in the background. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys. You need something darker for something lighter to show up and you need something lighter in the background for something darker to show up. So it's all about creating contrast to in order to get that light and shadow to work. So I'm going to come in with my highlights now and I'm going to use a little bit of green gold and white. I think this is my favorite combination. I love green gold with white. Uh, you can also add, and I may add a little bit of my uh, yellow.
Okay, back to my little round brush, I'm going to take a combination of my yellows, a little bit of yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of white, and add a nice sunny bright highlight on the front of this tree trunk. Right after adding a few more branches, shadows and highlights to the tree trunk, I'm going to come down below first with my little brown brush here and squiggle in some burnt sienna black, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. I want to start working on the base of this hill and build up the shadow and contrast a little bit more and saturation. I'm going to be switching over to a bigger brush. It's going to be my little um, oval mop brush and just start tapping in for some foliage. I'll be pulling and flicking up for those long beachy uh, blades of grass and tapping. So you can use a few different brush strokes to create this. And this again is just that uh, bit of contrast and shadow we need in order for our bike to really show up when we add that. So, but you can see how I just kind of pull, flick, and kind of curve with my brush as I'm doing it so that you get that feeling of movement and it's uh, breezy by the ocean or by the sea feel. I will be adding a few little um, suggestions of some flowers, nothing that really, really stands out and has too much detail. And I'll kind of play around with that with a few different colors. And then ultimately I'm going to be adding uh, a few apples down at the base of the hill, in the basket, the base of the tree, and you guys will see a little bit later on how everything kind of just flows together nicely. Okay, so I've got my Arteza Crimson Red here. Keep in mind you can use any red that you want, and I'm going to be using this with a little bit of black, a little bit of white and yellow. Eventually I'll be using a little bit of my Neon Red as well for the colors of the apples. A little filbert brush here, the smallest one I've got. You can use any small brush that you want. It's just for creating a little bit of water coming up on the shore here. I've got some of my yellow, white, and my bright uh, permanent blue. I'm going to start making these big scoops towards us in the foreground and then making smaller uh, little pulls with my brush back and forth as it gets further away uh, towards the horizon. Um, this kind of gives you that real a sense of uh, pull and movement and soft, gentle waves coming and crashing on the shore. I will be using some white to add the foam on the, the tops and the ends of those uh, waves and the water here pretty soon, but I just want to create a little bit more depth first with my blue and green. So I switched over to a larger filbert brush now. I think this one's a number six. And I'm gonna start taking a generous amount of titanium white and working on uh, the ends of the waves here in the water just to create that sense of foam and shallow water. Okay. 
Now I want to take just a little bit of that crimson red with my titanium white, blend the two together, and just make a really a soft pinky peachy sand color, and then add some more white for my waves. start adding a little bit of that peachy pinky color up in the sky just right above the horizon working my way up towards the far right just above the tree I'm not going to bring it up too much higher than that I want the main um, amount of the sky to be blue and then I'm going to turn my brush over and put, place my hand over it and kind of use it here like a like a palette knife so you can see how I turn it over like that Load the brush on the bottom, barely touch, and just lightly pull and drag to make it look foamy. I'm going to start playing around with some foliage and some flowers and little bushes here in the foreground. Kind of just, um, really just playing around and getting a feel for a, a, what kind of a look I want. Um, there's a few different types of flowers that um, pop up down at our beach um, throughout the year. Uh, we do have some little red ones and little berries and so I'm just kind of just going by memory and deciding what's going to work best in this in this painting. And you can definitely add whatever colors you want and what flowers you want to add. I'm just going to add a bit here. And then what I'm going to do is gently push some of that color off. I feel like it was just a little bit uh, too thick and it might compete. Uh, the color might compete too much with the apples that I'm going to add later. So I'm just gently pushing off, but I'm not going to take all of it off. I'm going to leave a little hint and suggestion of color there. so I think I'll just leave a little bit like that and I'm gonna switch over to one of my really awesome brushes this is an even tail rake fan brush I'm gonna get it really wet and get my grass colors that I want and make sure that you have a lot of water in your brush when you're using this otherwise it won't flow uh, this is a great brush for creating fur hair and grass Add a little bit more of my black with my greens and yellows down here to build this up a little bit darker and ultimately and eventually I'm going to be adding a little hints of uh, delicate daisies 
um, just using white tinted with maybe a little bit of uh, green, yellow, or red. But I'm going to switch brushes now and I'm going to start adding the apples on my tree. So I've got, um, this one might be a cat's tongue brush, kind of looks pointy on the end, so I think I switch up from filbert and a cat's tongue brush. You can use a round brush too, anything that you feel like you have enough control with to make your little apple shapes. And think about when you're looking at an apple tree or just apples in general, they're not always perfectly round, right? So keep that in mind. And viewing them down below, um, looking up at an apple tree, you're, you're not going to see all of every single apple right they're going to be in between some hidden by some leaves and some branches so consider that think about that and if it helps look at a reference photo of apple trees um, that'll make your paintings look more realistic and now i'm going to just add a little bit of a highlight i want to add a uh, little shine and little highlights and different um, softer pastel tones to part of my apples so i just took a bit of that cadmium yellow and a little bit of white and the red apples are still wet so it's kind of blending in together and it's kind of nice when you get um, different tones blending and and making different colors while, while you're applying it wet on wet like this but you can absolutely do this if your paint is already dry I'm going to add a few apples down here below too. I just thought it might be fun picturing coming down the hill after picking apples. Maybe all the apples were falling at the base of the tree and maybe I couldn't fit all of them in the basket of my bike. So there's a few left over down here below. And uh, yeah, I'll just do a few of these and add the same colors and um, an impressionistic look to them. Nothing again, nothing is too, too detailed in this painting even the bike i didn't want to go overly too detailed i really like a, a free loose and whimsical impressionistic look to my paintings um most of them some of the some of my paintings have a little bit more detail in them and take a little bit more time but not with this particular one today so i want to make sure i'm doing an apple in front of other apples uh, this will give it more depth and and make it look 3d So I'm going to begin painting my bike now. I've got a liner brush, it's a one inch, and I'm going to be using a few different yellows. I've got cadmium yellow warm, I've got a cadmium yellow cool, it's more like a lemon yellow. I'm also going to be using my yellow ochre, and I'll be using white as well, and a little bit of black for shadows to mix in. So um, you guys can decide how big you want your bike to be. If you, the bigger your bike is going to be in the foreground, the, the closer you'll feel to that bike. So that can actually create a lot of perspective and make it really interesting. Uh, of course, if you're gonna paint your bike smaller, it's gonna look a little bit farther away. It could also make it look like it's uh, more of a, a kid's bike. So there's a few things to think about when deciding what size you want your object to be in your painting. Um, so I decided to paint this yellow cruiser with a basket because I actually own one and I love it. And uh, you can pick any, you can make your bike whatever color you have. I have one of my patrons, because if you're a patron, you get early access to my videos. So she said that she's got a purple cruiser and she's going to paint her, her bike in, in this painting purple. So I'm really looking forward to seeing her version of that. Um, you could, yeah, I think uh, even a red bike would look really nice because there's so much green going on in this painting. You've got the green uh, hillside and grass and the tree, of course, and then the red apples. So that would look really complimentary to have a red um, bike as well. Uh, but I'm just going to simply do the two circles for 
the wheels and just follow along one brush stroke at a time. You can definitely slow this video down if you're watching it from a PC laptop. Um, you can pause it and you can just rewind and watch it over and over again. So don't feel at all intimidated. I'm painting really loosely and to be honest, I'm just not really trying too hard. I really want to have fun with this relax and enjoy myself so it's kind of on the messy whimsical impressionistic side but I like it I'm kind of leaning more towards that style uh, as I get older and as I've been painting um, for many years now and it's it's really fun when you guys get to that stage and maybe uh, there's probably a mixture of you guys watching right now and you're all at different levels of painting but if you're kind of like me and you have relaxed over the years and loosened up your painting style leave a comment below and let me know I'm always interested in hearing what stage and style of painter you are, what stage and, and level you're at. So I love reading your guys' comments. And of course, if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them below. And I'm usually really good at getting back to you guys right away. I'm just working on the basket now, guys. And I'm using my Burnt Sienna Black, a little bit of yellow ochre and white. Just doing little taps. Uh, I've got um, a Filbert Rake brush. And I've also got that fan rake brush. So you could use either one of those to make your basket have that weaved look to it. But here I'm using my little Filbert rake brush and it's really, really cool. I love this brush. I got both of these brushes, my rake brushes from Michaels. So you can get a lot of the brushes that I'm using at Michaels, except for the, some of my mop brushes are actually from a makeup set and I really love them. And I got those from Amazon. Let me know if you need the link. I know a lot of you guys have been purchasing them and really enjoy using them. I am not affiliated with Amazon. I don't get um, uh, any, you know, money for anything. It's just that when I find something that I really like, I want to share it with you guys to help your painting experience uh, be more enjoyable. So uh, you'll notice that I um, talk a lot about my whole buying paints and certain paints that I use. Again, I don't get paid for any of that. I just want you guys to um, learn how to paint better using quality products that will make that experience easier for you. So I just got a little mini mop brush and this is from my oh, one of the brushes from my makeup sets that I've got and I'm going to create some little a bits of foliage in here, maybe leaves from the apples. I'm not really sure. I just want to have this dark base here and I thought it would be a good choice and option to have against the red apple. So all I'm doing is, cre is creating a, a darker base that I chose green um, because it's complementary to red. And I'm going to come in and create a little bit more. Um, shadow behind the bike to make it stand out more. I'm going to start coming in with the bike now, the color, the yellow. At first, I grabbed just cadmium yellow warm, and right off the bat, it looks too dark. So I want to go back over that, start over with white. So that's what I'm going to do is just really lightly graze over that yellow. I don't have to completely cover it up. In fact, by taking some white and, and mixing it in with that cadmium yellow, uh, it'll be brighter just by doing that. So what I'll, I'll be doing is um, squeezing out some of my lemon yellow by Arteza or Arteza and uh, using that combination with my cadmium yellow and then of course adding little bits of uh, black in with my yellow ochre for wherever I need a shadow to be. 
another good option and good choice for a shadow color that you could use uh, is a light ultramarine blue or light blue violet. It's it's the same color. It's just depending on what brand of paint you're using. Some of them go by light ultramarine blue and some of them say light blue violet. Now if you don't have that exact shade, all you have to do is just take your regular ultramarine blue and mix it with a bit of titanium white or any white that you have. Uh, titanium white will just make your your colors brighter.
Okay, so now that I've painted my bike, I want to have it set in there in the grass a little bit more and not look like it's just just floating there. So I need to create a base for it to be nestled in and I'm just going to tap in some foliage and it's a really quick and easy fix and way to do that just with my oval mop brush. A uh, little bit of black, sap green, maybe some uh, green gold or a bit of yellow mixed in there. Oh, and you guys, if you don't, because a lot of you guys are asking, if you if you don't have green gold, it like the tube of green gold itself, you can make, you can substitute that with a cadmium yellow and black. You can use, uh, the best option would be um, cadmium yellow cool or just like a, a lemony yellow uh, but you could make it with a warmer yellow and, and black as well. So yeah, a lot of people don't know that if you mix yellow and black, you get green. So uh, give it a try, you guys, and experiment with different yellows and black and see what beautiful greens that you can make. I'm going to start adding my apples to the basket now. And I'm going to, you know, obviously layer them up. So to make them look layered, I'll, uh, you'll be able to do that by adding your highlights and going painting one over the other so that you look like you, so that it looks like it's a real basket of apples, but still done in an impressionistic, fun, whimsical way. Now for the tops of the apples, I'm going to do little tiny lines for the stems on the apples and you could even do a few little leaves if you wanted. Take whatever green, yellow, white, black for your highlights and shadows and the color of your leaves and stems. You can choose whatever you want. And I'm going to highlight the apples a bit more again with my yellow, red and white. And then I'm going to be coming in with my beautiful neon red by Holbein.
Okay, so now I'm just going to make a bit of pink with my red and white, add a few little dots and dabs here for some flowers, and I'm not sure what kind of flowers those are, but I will be adding some little daisies here pretty soon. I'll start building up some daisies, and these flowers are really easy to do, and they look pretty and add a lot of atmosphere to a painting, I think. just little um, hints and suggestions of some more grass and flowers and then sweeping out the rest of that light pink in my brush out into the sky I think this is just a really nice way to finish off this painting and as I add the finishing touches to this painting I do want to say thanks again so much I can't say it enough how much I appreciate each and every one of you for all of your support on my channel and patreon Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest <laughs> There's a lot of places where I have a lot of support from all of you guys, so it does not go unnoticed. I appreciate all of you. Hope you guys like this one. Leave a comment below and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. I'll see you all very soon in my next video. Bye!